Welcome to Desk Geek. What you see before you is the pocket chip. The pocket chip is a handheld device that is created for the $9 computer, the world's first $9 computer. That's the next big thing is the company who uh, created this. It is a direct competitor in ways to Raspberry Pi. Certainly individuals looking for one of those low cost computer systems would look to going to a chip or to a Raspberry Pi being two big uh, players in the field. I actually had ordered the chip and the pocket chip, the device that comes with the screen and the keyboard before I ever got into Raspberry Pi. This was a big Kickstarter campaign that was very successful. And the next big thing I will say did a fantastic job of communicating with the user base throughout the entire Kickstarter project. It was probably one of the best Kickstarter projects I had seen as far as communication goes, some delays and things uh, out there, but for the most part delivered the product exactly as they intended and on time. So from that, I give them a huge amount of praise because so many companies, first of all, take the money and never end up delivering the product and number two, deliver something subpar. I would say for the most part, they delivered everything that they advertised they were going to bring with the chip. So this obviously isn't $9. This is, I believe, about a $35 add-on that has a screen and keyboard. But behind this little device in here is the chip itself. And then you have these plug-in devices like this, which will allow you adapters to go to HDMI that you can plug into the chip and run it by itself and install different operating systems, etc. So let's talk about this chip here itself and I will take it out after I give you a demo of the pocket. It has Wi-Fi, BG, and N built into it, which is a very nice touch, a one gigahertz processor, R8 processor. So very small, but fast and snappy, four gigabytes of storage built on board. So that's the big differentiator here, really between this and say Raspberry Pi first or second generation is that built on storage. You don't have to have a micro SD card. That actually ends up being a huge negative to me uh, on this device. And one of the reasons why I've struggled to really find a place for it within all of my devices, uh, to me, to kind of stick to the heart of the matter, this is more of a playing toy than it is something that I would institute as a solution uh, for anything. And a lot of it has to do with that storage solution. Now, of course, you can go in and you can add with these dips, you can add little, uh, you can add a connection to allow for SD cards, etc. But of course, all of that's extra, requires modifications, etc. Uh, it has 512 megabytes of RAM that comes on it, so a little light on the RAM side, um, but enough that you can do most uh, things that you would expect to do with a $9 computer. Bluetooth 4.0. So Bluetooth being installed on this is fantastic as well, but again, this becomes one of the hang-ups that I'll talk about more later, that while it's fantastic, I really wish they that they had Bluetooth implementation. I really wish they would have installed more USB adapters like the Raspberry Pi has on it. You can see we've got uh, four USB adapters on the Raspberry Pi plus your micro SD card. On the chip, you get one USB adapter there. And then you have your uh, 3.5 millimeter adapter and of course your um, charging port mini USB there. So in addition, chip does work with most screen displays. You can buy these dips for composite. Uh, composite's actually built in, but you can get these for um, VGA, HDMI, etc. And these will just plug in to the card. Now I have bent pins on these several times. It is a very tight connection you can see some of those pins on the right hand side here are bent and uh, getting this out of the uh, chip itself removing it can be sometimes a daunting task that you end up bending some pins so I'm not sure if that's really a design issue or just the fact that uh, maybe I'm not patient enough with it but it is what it is so what you're seeing here is the pocket chip tutorial and so the pocket chip has a nice little screen here You've got a keyboard, 
directional pads, you've got function keys. The keyboard is very difficult to get used to initially, but once you do get the feel for where things are, you can execute on it quite well. It's uh, not the best keyboard I've ever used, but considering a portable computer, it's pretty cool. And I do like, this is kind of a neat feature. These little holes here actually can act as a stand. And if I can find myself a pencil, I will actually let's use a screwdriver and show you that you can just kind of slide that in there and create a little bit of a stand with this device. Yeah, it's not going to work on my work mat, but in any case, trust me, it works if you have a pen or something a little longer. But that's not the main feature you're looking for. So you've got a nice little tutorial that tells you here to disable the tour, to hit this button, you know, navigate the tour, these two buttons, and then escape to get out of the tour. And here is your main operating system. Now this leaves a lot to be desired. You basically have this Play Pico, which is a game, very simplistic game uh, creator, more pixel pixelated graphics, pixel art. Uh, but you can go in there and kind of modify that game and play with it. You've got a terminal, of course, where you can install things, and it's your basic uh, Linux-based Debian terminal. And you have Make Music, Browse Files, Write, and Get Help. And you can see there's no other menu items on here. And as far as your settings go, this is all you get. You can do a brightness, volume, and your Wi-Fi. Now, I will say the community out there, if you go to the CHIPS website and the forums, they've developed things where you can do add-ons and installs that will allow you to customize additional items within the chip. And this is very, very useful. For instance, there is an add-on that will allow you to add icons to your screen, because right now you can't do that. And that's a huge failure point in my mind. I can install things through the terminal in the background, but I can't get an icon on the screen because it wasn't written for that. Hopefully they come out with an update officially that puts that into their operating system. But this is really the operating system that comes with the pocket chip. Now you can go and install other versions of operating systems, Debian based, uh, more light Linux based operating systems. And you could do everything that you do with the Raspberry Pi essentially. You can install Plex, you can install Kodi, you can create different types of file, uh, FTP servers, etc. They've got all kinds of projects out there. It's not as supported as Raspberry Pi, which pretty much you can type in a browser and get forums from all across the world and how to do things. The chip is a little less supported in that way, but on their website, there's a lot of great, intelligent, fantastic people who are there who are doing great things with this, uh, which makes it very cool. With that said, when I talked about the four gigabytes of memory built in, there's no way, if I wanted to make this a Plex server, for instance, the only USB slot I have here would be where I would put the USB memory that I had or attach an external hard drive to it for a Plex Media or even a Kodi server. So then any type of interactions I would have to do, I'd have to have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. So that can be something that you enjoy having. I don't have any Bluetooth uh, mice or keyboards, uh, just not something that I keep in stock. So for me, not having additional USB ports was a huge letdown. And anytime I was installing a extender USB device, the amount of power coming to this USB 2.0 port did not seem to be able to support uh, a keyboard, a mouse, and a memory unit at the same time, at least with any of the three attachments that I tried. So that created a ton of frustration for me when using the chip. And again, I'm not an expert on the chip. I don't think there really is, except for those that created it. I just know that between the two, I prefer the Raspberry Pi just because it, the ability for HDMI, I've got my 3.5, I've got my micro USB, I've got four USB ports, I've got Ethernet Direct Connect. This is obviously a little more expensive than the $9, you're at 30 bucks, so is it a fair comparison? Probably not, you know, maybe more of a Raspberry Pi 1 or 2 would be more of a fair comparison. But at the same time, if you're looking to get into one of these mini low cost computers, I think it's worth the extra cost probably to go with the Pi. There is some neat features on this. Uh, I think they're kind of neat, but then again, they're kind of draconian in a way. For instance, if you want to flash the operating system on this, you have to take a uh, clothespin or a paper clip, I mean, and run it between 
the FEL and the ground here. And you can also do this on the chip itself, but they did think ahead of time and they put these connectors, ran these connectors all the way up at the top so you could do it while it's installed on the pocket chip. And so you put that paper clip in there, you have to use a Chrome browser, you have to install a Chrome add-in, and then that will allow you to flash to one of the operating systems they have. To me, again, kind of a draconian way of going about installing operating systems, but at the end of the day, it works. What have I done with this? I've tried to install some of the add-ons from the community. I didn't spend a ton of time on it. Honestly, this frustrated me trying to use this little keyboard and everything probably more than it helped. It's neat, it's a cool idea, but I just really couldn't get into it. I installed Doom on this, the original Doom, which you can do through the terminal and was able to play it some but again uh, while it runs fine and the speed is fine utilizing this controls these keys here was rather difficult for me to get used to and if, if i spent more time using it every single day i probably could get good at it but i'm not sure why i would want to spend my time doing that with that said additionally you know play pico and make music and just these basic apps that it comes with there's so much available on linux that would have been useful here, but it's just not included. And even in the right pad, I find it's just not very intuitive. I'm not gonna be writing a book on this. The keys are very firm to press. It's, it's okay, it's acceptable, but it's a toy at the end of the day. And I think that's really the point. So I'm gonna power this off now and show you the actual chip itself because you do not need the pocket chip in order to and the power button doesn't seem to be working so let's try this shut down all right so now that that's shut down here you have your battery you can see inside here you've got a little bit of interface um, chip i think it's well made it's neat looking Again, you end up bending pins as you try to get things out. You can see they've got a nice, I love how they did, they really thought this part through. On each of the dips areas here, they have everything labeled for what it does. You can interface with it here at the top. You can interface with it here. It's just really well done in that way. So there's some features I really like about the chip. This is it, this is the $9 computer. If you didn't order the pocket chip, this is what you'd get for the nine bucks. And so what we have here is our micro USB, 3.5, a USB. You've got your main processor. You have your uh, Wi-Fi, BG and N, and your Bluetooth connectivity. And of course you have some ability to add in one of these dips. So if we go and we add an HDMI dip here, there you go, so now that dip is installed and I can power this up through HDMI. Overall, once you have that installed, you can go and install a version of Linux and flash this device. Um, in order to do that, you'd have to remove the dip. And then on the sides, you can see they have it well labeled and you'd have to put the paper clip within the FEL and the ground and then plug this in through the micro to USB to your computer, put the Chrome browser up and then flash this with whatever operating system. And again, you're limited to that four gigabytes unless you can expand this or put an external hard drive through the USB port, but then your USB port is completely used up and you won't be able to utilize any keyboards or mouse. At the end of the day, when you install anything like Debian on the chip and try to run it through this interface, the screen is so small and compact that it cuts off 90% of your view and most of the software really is kind of unusable. You're gonna to have to do a ton of tweaking with Linux in order to get it to look right on that screen. And even then, after I followed many, many guides that people would put out there, it was barely usable at all. So the idea of having a portable Linux terminal that I could utilize and have fun with was kind of out the door. Yes, I could go and install things like Kodi and or make an FTP server or whatever I wanted out of this eventually, but with all of the forum support out there for Raspberry Pi, 
it would be much quicker and easier to do it through that than it would be to try to do it on a chip here. If you like to tinker and you like to play with different devices, I think pocket chip is a great thing. I think there's a lot of advancements that need to be made before this can be taken as a serious competitor. I do love some of the things they tried to do and implement here. And with a little bit of improvement in their own software, they could have something here that I think would be absolutely fantastic and people would love. But they're going to have to make those tweaks. They're going to have to improve their software that comes with this device to make it more robust and usable for your average user. So that's it. I've struggled with this review, doing this review for weeks because there's just so many things that I like about this chip, but then there are so many things that I just ended up hating and I wanted to give this the most fair review I could um, without putting down the company that did an amazing job in their Kickstarter. I was a big supporter of them. They delivered on what they were supposed to. I don't feel like I lost my money, but I also don't feel like I'm probably going to invest a lot of my time in this because it's not just something that I needed, but you may love this thing and you may absolutely love to get in there and tinker with boards and add-ons and things like that and if that's the case then this will be a really fun device for you so i hope you've enjoyed this review leave your comments below i can be wrong just because i don't like it doesn't mean it's not great and let me know what you've done with the pocket chip or if you've played with it liked it hated it whatnot thank you so much for supporting the community and i will talk to you guys later Don't get the video.